Hello everybody, Joey here, Maniac for Bricks. I'm uploading this video based on a video I saw from definitely Nate Talks. So check out his channel for the inspiration for this video of why and how do I have so much nerf. Um, this is going to be a bit of a story time with it, kind of hitting on a couple of story beats from over the years. I could probably expand upon it in another video or even independent blasters that I grew up with. And if they, you know, resonate with me still nowadays. Um, but I'm kind of giving you the the cliff notes of it. So growing up, I had an older brother, uh, two years older than me. And he and I love Nerf in the 90s, early 2000s. We grew up with the end strike blasters. There's actually still the box from one of the ones we had, the barricade. Um, we had a couple of the niche ones from the 90s. Uh, the most particular that I can remember was the Supermax 5000, which is a very modular system where you could fire darts, um, foam rockets, and ballistic balls out of it, which I thought was really cool. We also had a couple of super soakers here and there. They're, like, comparable to each other. So it wasn't like one was more advantageous than the other, which is good. Um, we even had ones that weren't super soaker brand or nerf brand at all. They were, like, waterworks or something like that. They were really big um, blasters that filled up by a faucet, by a hose. There was, like, a little thing you insert into the faucet itself to fill it up. But it packs a punch when it does. It's fantastic. And I would love to talk about that in another video, at least. Uh, especially now it's getting warmer outside. So, um, we grew up with different kinds of blasters. We would play games in the backyard. We actually invented games. I've mentioned one or two before on the channel. Nerf Ultra, which we called as a game way back in the day. Before Ultra was even an actual series. Um, before it was even a twinkle in the eyes of Hasbro. So, um, we grew up with a lot of different Nerf Blasters, and we did we, we made the best out of them, but they were still like many other toys we grew up with. We dropped them off at some point, you know, played for a, a couple of years. Um, I also remember that we had the Unity Power System growing up. We played with the entire thing as the whole, um, the whole big package, all three blasters together. We played with it with the DVD on our TV and having the suction darts hit the actual screen. Um... I even played with some of them just on a separate wall in my room or in the um, family room in our house and just like trying to like stack as many foam darts like suction darts onto the wall as possible before they fell off, which is cool. Um, so a lot of fun memories with that. But there was a time when we stopped playing with them, didn't play with them as much, even with relatives we didn't play at some point um, and weren't really paying attention to other nerf blasters for a while. The next time that I can think that was a big impact for me was the Toys R Us. Many years later, the Zombie Strike series would have been happening, and I saw the Flip Fury on the shelf. And I thought, hey, the Flip Fury is a pretty cool looking blaster. It's like a pistol, but you have like this trigger function, so you can actually swap around the barrel. So it's like when you're done with your first six, you got six more ready to go. It's a really cool thing, like having more darts and um, without having... A mag to it or having you know already inserted so you could just keep firing um so i remember i bought that at toys r us i bought the flip fury i enjoyed it for some time but i still didn't really have a lot of other people i was playing with so it didn't last too long um playing it outdoors unfortunately Many years would pass, and I would mostly learn about Nerf through things like YouTube. So people would be doing these different videos, like the Great Office War was a fantastic way of learning about more Nerf blasters. Some that I grew up with, some that I'd never seen before. And I remember that um, being such a cool cinematic thing, just a YouTube kind of thing, you know? People being out there being creative, you know, just having a little bit of fun with it, you know? Um, and... There were even some cases of videos like that where people would use Nerf and it would be more CGI, you know, a little more, more um, fantasy oriented, but it was still really cool nonetheless. Um, when I learned about, I want to say about 2016, 2017 or so, I started really getting into YouTube regularly with Nerf, not doing videos myself with it, but rather learning about it from other people. So... Um, Coop772, many people have known for Nerf reviews, you know, very high quality videos and 
you know, regular uploads of them. Um, there's Captain Xavier, there's Lord Draconical. I learned about those guys, you know, throughout that time, then started getting more familiar with what was available now, what was available on the shelves, what was good, what was not so good, um, you know, different functions that they had and things like that. So I don't remember how many I bought then, but I do remember that I was more aware of them. So like if I was going into Toys R Us or I was going into Target or something like that, I would peruse the Nerf aisle more regularly on my trips. It's like, okay, I'm going for something else, but let me check what's in Nerf. Let's see what's out there. <coughs> so, um, I, I can remember that somebody uh, gifted me some Nerf blasters in 2017. Um, it was the Modulus ECS-10, which didn't have all the parts, but it still had, like, the base, you know, blaster, strife-like thing. Um, the Thunder... Thunderhawk, Thunder Bow, the, the long bow one that's mega, that I always forget the name of it, and some people, you know, go here or there about it. I'm still a little weary about it, even to this day. Um, but it still gave me a little bit more to work with. The Hellfire was one I remember enjoying when it was on the shelves, brand new, just like a cool idea of having so many already inserted in there. So yeah. Um, a lot of stuff that was that was neat that was popping up all, all over the place. But then uh, around 2018, I had learned about the adult fandom that there are actually adults who play games that modify blasters that do a lot more with um, foam darts um, all over the place. And I learned about my local group. I actually learned about a couple of groups in the tri-state area. Um, I should probably talk about this on a separate story time-ish video about, uh, NYC nerf herders and how I joined my first nerf war then. Um, I've mentioned before about the one that I had at summer camp, um, back in 2009. There was also a period, I, I should probably do this as a separate video as well, but there was a time in, in Boy Scouts, like around 2009 or so, but separate occasion where I actually used blasters like the barricade at a uh, scout meeting, which is kind of cool. So in 2018 or so, I learn about a couple of groups and I joined Garden State Nerf Squad and I get more familiar with not only other people, but also other blasters and more about the community, more about what's, you know, what's being done, what's being revolutionized. And this was in the era still of, I say era, it's only a couple of years ago, but still things are moving fast. This is still in the era of Adventure Force blasters and darts. So we, you know, a little bit of lean away from nerf because of some gimmicks here and there. A little bit more to modify with other kinds of blasters, integrations, and these kinds of darts being the standard. Um, little Valentines I remembered being on, on par with them. So I remember buying a pack of them. I probably still have it somewhere in here. Um... But things were moving fast. <laughs> so not only were they going to Adventure Force darts as a better version than Elite darts, but they're also going to half darts. So there were um, different companies and different brands out there of, of half darts that were coming out or even just shaving these down, you know, modifying the internals of the blasters to a company for that. And now we have things like Adventure Force Pro, which, you know, is a very suitable option, especially out the shelf from a Walmart or something to pick up and play for competitive games. And I'm still novice as far as, you know, blasters, as far as modifying them. So I do very much appreciate that. Even though I had problems with the, uh, what's it called? The striker. The, I think it was the striker. That was like the target version of the Nexus pro. I had problems with that last year, but I digress. Um, so anyways, um, beyond that, I was able to, you know, get more acquainted with the blasters, get more into different kinds of blasters out there. I actually opened up Top Rival 2018 or so. Um, when Toys R Us came back in 2019, they had two different stores that were in New Jersey and Texas. There was a Galleria in Texas and Garden State Plaza in New Jersey. I live in New Jersey, and I was very close to where that uh, store was, so I applied there. I got to be a part of that, and I could talk about that as a whole different video, um, or even different videos of different experiences there. But either way, I was uh, part of the 
uh, different areas of the store that, you know, I already knew just had inherent knowledge of Lego, Nintendo, and Nerf while still learning a little bit of everything else just to be a very helpful sales associate. Um, so it was very uh, common for people to come up to me, other associates to come up to me for questions about Nerf or Lego or Nintendo or even being positioned near those areas to help with demonstrations, which was really fun and, and engaging with other, you know, customers like that um so i've even bought some because of that while i was working at the store i bought a percy's in blue and in red while i was working there uh probably got the, a couple other blasters as well um but i did open up to the rival line sometime before that and i i really do like them even though the accuracy is not exactly there they are getting better uh from what i've heard and what is it? The, it's like the bluish line that's out now in 2022. I forget what the name of it is, but basically the AccuStrike 2 rival ammo, um, which is cool. I, I haven't tried them out yet personally, so I hope they are actually as they advertise. Um, I've only just seen a couple of reviews here and there, but hopefully I could replenish that because I would love to use them. I love using these in games. Um, they are better for distance out of the box and also really good for capacity out of the box. You know, that's one thing I like about Rifle a lot is that they're already bite-sized versions of of ammo. Kind of like the short darts, um, but before that I got into short darts. <laughs> so, um, already, you know, I can stack a whole lot of ammo on me without carrying a lot of weight or carrying extra mags. And there are some Rifle Blasters that have mags to them, but... Oops. There are some Rifle Blasters that have mags to them but they don't all um, need them. It's it's cool for people who like them, but it's not all it's not always uh, necessary. So that's why I like things like the Artemis, the Hades, the Percy's. Those are some of my favorites, not only of of rival blasters, but of Nerf blasters in general. Um, I still like the Nexus Pro, the Aeon Pro. I mean, it's good. But it still has, um, I think that's just me on the grip, that I can't, like, prime it too quickly um, for for a lot of game use. I just have to, you know, work with that a bit. Um, the Striker, like I said before, I don't quite like as much. Um, but I'm still trying to get into other blasters here and there for short dart use. Or even, what if I took a, an existing blaster and modified it to use short darts? So I need to try to acquaint myself more with that. Like I said, I have 15 bins alone, uh, minimum, uh, for Nerf Blasters in here. So, yeah, it's not it's not pretty. Um, there are plenty of these blasters that I do not need. Like, I did not buy every single one of them thinking, hey, I want to use this, or hey, I want to scrap it for parts. There are lots of them that I've picked up in Nerf lots over the years. So they could be from eBay, Shop Goodwill, or Facebook Marketplace, commonly. Any of those that I've picked up a bunch of these. I got the Supermax 5000 replaced because my original copy broke um, many years ago and, and got discarded. But I found another one through Facebook Marketplace. It was a Nerf lot. I still had to drive half an hour, 40 minutes or so out of my way to pick it up. Um... But the lot itself was 40 bucks, and it had that sitting on top of there, and I was like, that's worth it alone. And there were like a good 20 blasters or so in there. There were even some laser tag blasters, a few water guns, um, some off-brand ones that are very shoddy for dart blasters, but still, it was very, very worthwhile for the whole lot, especially just trying to get that blaster back and then having a couple other ones that could be very useful. So, like, a couple Rival Blasters were in there that were, like, at least $12 to $20 a piece buying them on their own. So, like I said, the value was there. Um, so, there was some time later that I actually... I am up to now owning three copies of the Supermax 5000, but not all of them complete. I only have enough parts to complete one of them, and at that, almost one of them, if I remember correctly... There was one that I have with a different tube than the other one, which fires almost the same, and they both actually fire Ultra, which I thought was a surprise. Remind me to upload that video, because I I recorded that back in 2020, and after acquiring them, and I'm like, yeah, I need to do that. <laughs> I need to actually show how this works, because it was cool for what it was, um, even though the footage may be a little bit dark. 
I mean, it's not as dark as this right now, though. But either way, I still have a big love for Nerf. I still want to be a part of the games, the community. Uh, I've met a lot of really nice people through it, and there's more that I'd like to meet in person. Um, so I'm hoping that even though I have to whittle down some of the Nerf collection because there are some that I have absolutely no use for or have fundamentally broken. Um, and, you know, I just want to try to keep some stuff that still means something to me, but still have some stuff that I could work towards. I don't know how quickly I can learn to be a modder. I, Like I said, I've been in this for four years as an adult, and there's still things that I know of. I've picked up mod kits or even just parts, but I still haven't actually sat down to tweak them. Um, so I'd still like to try that at some point and try to upgrade things so I don't have to just use, you know, only a handful of blasters um, to be quote unquote competitive, you know, something that's like worthy of range and worthy of capacity. That's what I consider competitive, like for, for most of my local games. Um, but still have something that, you know, stands out. Something that, that says, hey, this is me, this is what I like to use, and I'm here to have fun. So, we'll see how it all works out. And, uh, I don't know when the next video will be. I've had a bunch of videos that have been sitting in limbo for years, and maybe I could, uh, finally go around and get those up. Who knows? But either way, thanks for watching. I'm sorry that the last part of this cut out. My camera decided that it would stop using the flash. So, whatever. But uh, thanks for watching either way. Hope you guys have a good one. And I'd love to hear about your experiences in the comments below. Or if there are certain blasters you want me to cover that I either showed on camera or mentioned or I've brought up at some point or another. I would love to... I've, I've always wanted to do a video or a series of videos reviewing certain blasters like on a weekly basis or something, but I don't want to be too uh, overambitious either. So, have a good night. Take care.